So now what we're going to do is we're going to import exactly the same project using an EDL based workflow. Now, some of you may ask, hey, if I've got XML import available to me, or I've got AAF import available to me, why would I ever use the primitive file format of EDLs? And the answer is there are going to be a lot of situations where EDLs are frankly just going to be simpler, more efficient, or maybe it's the only file format you're going to be able to get out of the editor. One of DaVinci Resolve's strengths is its support for a wide variety of diverse workflows. We're only scratching the surface here in this particular set of training videos, but it's important to know how to work with EDLs because I guarantee you there are going to be times when you're going to need to use them. Let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm going to click the Add button. I'm going to name this Imported EDL class project. Click Create. Now, this time I guarantee you we are going to want to set the Timeline Conform option timecode calculated at frame rate. EDLs, as you know, are one track only, although the file format supports one level of superimposition in the form of a key track or key clip, that functionality is not supported by DaVinci Resolve. Let's go ahead and get to it. Now, when you're working with an EDL workflow, we want to take a trip to the browse page first. And what we want to do with the browse page is find all of the media that we're going to want for use by that EDL. I'm going to go ahead and drill down and drill down until I find all of the media. There it is. Now, that's one way to go about doing it. Import each folder of media individually. Anytime I double click a clip in the clip details pane, it's automatically added to the media pool. I'm going to go ahead and right click in the media pool and choose remove all clips just to clear that out. However, the easier way for me to do this is to identify the top level directory that contains all of the subdirectories of media I'm going to want to access. In this case, I can see Intro to Resolve Project contains the Dynapep Hero Media Managed folder, which itself contains the media and VFX folders. And what I can do is I can right click on that top level folder. And remember what I told you in the first lesson, anytime you right click, or at least most times you right click in a pane of DaVinci Resolve, you're going to be presented with a whole bunch of commands that you didn't know existed before. So it's a good idea to get used to right clicking on things and see if there's any additional functionality that might make your life easier. In this case, we're going to go ahead and choose Add Folder and Subfolders into Media Pool. So DaVinci Resolve is now going to go ahead and traverse that whole hierarchy of nested folders and add all that media to the Media Pool. Now here's a word of warning. It's not a very good idea, especially when you have uh, a media directory that has not been media managed or consolidated in any way. It's not really a good idea to add every single clip that was ever shot for a particular project to the media pool. If you end up with a media pool containing thousands of shots and you link it to a project or a reel, chances are your performance is going to suffer, especially when it comes time to save or autosave your project. It's just going to be really cumbersome. So I'm going to show you another thing that you can do. Again, I'm going to right click within the media pool and choose remove all clips just to empty it out. And what I'm going to show you is again, right click on that enclosing folder up in the clip details pane. And what we're going to choose is add folder and subfolders based on EDLs into media pool. So I select that and the first thing Resolve is going to do is it's going to ask me to select an EDL file for splitting the clips. What I'm going to do is go into my directory, find the EDL, click open. 
Now it's going to ask me to confirm the file conform frame rate. Uh, this is important. You want to make sure you get your frame rates right. Click OK. What Resolve just did is it only imported the media within those folders that was actually referenced by the EDL. You'll notice that the media pool list is much shorter than it was before. At this point, even though I had all kinds of media within those directories, I've only imported the media that I needed as specified by the EDL into the media pool. So this by far is the best way to add media in an EDL-based workflow. Once I've set this up, now I take a trip to the conform page. And the first thing I want to do is click the new button in the timeline management pane because what it's going to do is create that master session we talked about a little while ago. I click OK. And again, this master session is simply a string out of every single clip in that EDL. Very simple. Now what I want to do is click the load button. And when I click the load button, it's going to ask me to choose a file to import. In this case, I want to choose the EDL. I click Open. I have a slightly different group of settings available to, to me than I did before. In particular, notice the automatically import source clips is not an option here. I click OK. And here, the whole project has been reconformed to match the media in the media pool. And at this point, I'm all set and ready to work. Now that's one way of using EDLs. There's another way of using EDLs. We're going to jump back to the config page. I'm going to go ahead and save this project. We're going to create a new project. And this time I'm going to name it Imported Notched Class Project. The last EDL import example we saw illustrated how to import a group of discrete media files and conform them to match an EDL. That is the kind of workflow you would follow if you were conforming an EDL to match R3D media, say for a RED project. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at a situation where you have what I like to refer to as a baked master. If I select this Dynapep baked master clip, you'll see that it's a simple, flattened QuickTime movie of the entire project. This is still a common workflow, and for things like commercial spots, it can actually be the simplest way to work. Why go through the hassle of managing a whole pile of discrete media when your client can simply export one big file, give it to you, and give you an EDL that you can use to chop that file up back into individual shots to help you in grading. So we've got this baked master. What we're going to do is we're going to double click it to add it to the media pool. Now we go into the conform page. I'm going to go ahead and create that master session. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this pre-conform button. When I click pre-conform, once again I'm asked to select an EDL file, which I will happily do. Find that EDL file, click open. I'm asked for a session name for the session that's about to be created. I click OK. And what Resolve has helpfully done is it's used that EDL file to chop that main chunk of media back into its constituent shots, which is what I want because now when I go into the color page, I've got all of my shots lined out nicely. And I can grade just as if I had been given already a set of discrete 
media clip. So this is another way of working with EDLs that's extremely powerful. Uh, it's essentially the equivalent of a tape-to-tape -tape workflow.